There can be only one. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. All out of bubblegum. Go ahead. Make my day. Cinema Royale. I'm too old for this shit. I can't believe that just fucking happened. Groovy. Hello, welcome to Cinema Royale, where we talk about the cinema, films, movies, and etc. in the Ring of Royale at the Round Table of Discussion. I'm your host, Midnight Mike. Along with me are my fellow film officiatos to talk about such films. First up is James Sullivan, also known as Jaime Dude. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by John's Dairy and Pool Services. We have hot tubs with cows in them. Wait, what? That's news to me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and our fellow Canadian Matt Brunet, also known as Animat. And today's show is also brought to you by the Emmy Awards, which is airing just as we speak while we're doing this podcast, but we don't really give a crap that much because we are talking about movies, not TV shows. So let's carry let's carry on with this. Thank you for that. This episode, as you can tell by the title above the video slash podcast, is about films set in the future. These said films take place in the future, of course. They depict it as, you know, they don't know what the future is, so they depict it as their own. They essentially guess what's going to happen in the future. Yes. In other words. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I'm looking at at the, uh, uh, the list here. And uh, just uh, picking off uh, a number of different uh, titles right off the bat, it, it seems to me like there's um, there's a, tendence, a tendency uh, towards a lot of these future-based films, uh, specifically of the science fiction uh, genre. Mm-hmm. Most of them are science fiction. Surprise. Uh, and that is that the the future is dark. That's the theme. That's mm-hmm. the overall trope that that some of these get uh, encapsulated by. Uh, just to pull up a few titles here: Twelve Monkeys, nineteen eighty four. Uh, um, a boy and his dog, A Clockwork Orange, A Skinner Darkly, A Sound of Thunder. Maybe. Um, uh, you sort of get the the gist of what I'm going for here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, yeah. Alien. Wait, alien a clockwork orange is set in the future? Uh, yeah. Yes. Indeed so. Yes. The futuristic world of 1995. Yeah, 1995, <laughs> mind you, and it came out in 71. <laughs> yeah. Eon Flux, which we might as well call Eon sucks because I didn't like it very much. Um, uh, but me um, there's that there's that depiction of the future. <laughs> there's that depiction of the future, and then mm-hmm. there's uh, the overall trope where uh, the future is just fine, like um, like um, mm-hmm. uh, essentially say, like. Uh, uh, well, I know what you're talking maybe. about. It's uh, essentially like, yeah, it's like the same future, like the future, like wouldn't be that much of a big change. It's like, it's going to be how we live today, except it's only the technology. It's much more enhanced, essentially. Yeah. So like, there's no, like, we'll, we'll still have the same amount of crimes. We'll still have like the same lifestyle that we have. The only thing that'll just change is just the technology around us, and um, like like how we just adapt to it. Like it's just a regular thing in our households. 
Yeah, and there's actually a name for both of those mm-hmm. futures. The correct terms is, the, you know, the dark future is known as the dystopia, dystopian future, mm-hmm. where it's all... I thought, it, I thought it would be mm-hmm. the apocalyptic future. That's... Clo- that can be subbed into dystopia. Earth. Um, where that happens, and then you know the perfect future. You know everything's all fine. Is called the utopia future, utopian future. Mm-hmm. So, two different futures, dark and perfect. That's what most science fiction films are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to give you a, a further idea that, well, uh, future is amazing. Uh, you know, this is an idea that uh, that goes back uh, further than, say, the Jetsons. But um, um, when you talk about futurist, you look at futuristic action movies, okay? Uh, you've mm-hmm. got... Uh, uh, you've got films like uh, Blade Runner, which is, I'd, I'd say it looks dystopian, but I'm not sure if it, uh, uh, if the actual universe is dystopian. That's a good question. And uh, then, mm-hmm. and then you've got other cases like uh, uh, with similar future scenarios. Or similar future worlds like uh, the world in the fifth element, which is not necessarily dark at all. It's just uh, it, it just happens to have Bruce Willis in it. <laughs> yeah, it just happens to have Bruce Willis in it. Uh, damn mm-hmm. you, John! Everything McClane. is amazing you in always these bring futures. Stuff. Yeah, Blaine <laughs> Runner is this dystopian future. Yeah, and um, another one that um, you, you it could be considered like another one is that um, I'm thinking maybe something like a utopia that suddenly turns into a dystopia, where essentially the, the future is going fine, but then there's that one little element that would change um, how everybody's lifestyle is, or there's like something wrong with the new technology. And, like, it suddenly goes out on a rampage against the humans. Some good examples that, that I can think of is um, uh, iRobot, where the robots are suddenly turned again. Like, there's a new version of, like, a helping robot that aids people. And suddenly, like, they notice there's a bug on the system that they can think for themselves. And they want to destroy the humans. Or another one is the island, where there's a bunch of clones, like, um, that are used for... Like, um, if ever uh, a rich, a, like a rich person is sick, they'll, they'll just take the uh, the organ from the uh, clone and just put it on uh, on the rich person. But then there's this one clone who realized that, every, like, his life is a lie, and he wants to find the truth with this uh, other clone girl. You, you get where I'm going at? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sort of. This is THX you're referring to, right? THX? No, no, no. No, no, no. I was referring to um, the island. And, like, the first one I mentioned was iRobot, and the other one was uh, the island. It was with Ewan McGregor and I think Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, the Michael Bay movie. Was it Michael Bay? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. The Mike... You can tell by the amount of advertisements it had in it. I didn't realize it. Uh, I, I didn't see, like, I don't know. It lacked a lot of explosions. Hmm. It is. I don't know. Like... Well, that's just... <laughs> <laughs> just is. There is no island. I guess so. Whoop. 
Oops. Okay, so looking through here a little bit more, um, I see uh, I see another another possibility, um, another possible uh, subgenre here. Uh, the um, an idea in which uh, uh, the future isn't that is it necessarily uh, science fiction that we're dealing with? Well, theoretically, the the reason why it would be science fiction is mostly because of the uh, the amount of technology would have that doesn't exist to that essentially doesn't exist today. Like that's essentially why like. Like oh like there's a tel like there's a teleporter we can't we don't have teleporters here so it's pretty much si for now it's considered science fiction because like we don't have that technology now nor if we know like we'll have that like nor do we like actually know if there's gonna be um, teleportation technology in the future so like it's not like they're basically creating things like that would change our life our lifestyle it's essentially like fakes it's like they're guessing the science of the future so that's why it has to be considered science fiction okay so uh, the, but the uh, uh, the assumption there is that uh, something taking place in the future must necessarily be science fiction and here's a here's a film that throws a wrench in the works uh, Child's Play 3 is hey, listed as a film that, yes, Child's Play. A Child's Play movie is, but and uh, I personally think it's the worst of the bunch, but in the film's universe, it takes place in the future or uh, several years down the road. Oh, uh, from yeah. the events I, of the first two films. Yeah, yeah, they're referring to, you know, the second movie, you know, happened, and then eight years later, after the second movie, the third one begins. So they're just kind of like, you know, some time has passed. It's not really the futuristic world we see with lots of gadgets and awesomeness. It's just a, like, a transition kind of thing with most movies, such as Child's Play. Hmm. Well, to be fair, like with films it's... like Child's Play, they're only advancing like a few years in the future. Like um, with Child's Play, like it was released in 1991, and they're guessing the events in 1998. Like, of course, there won't be that big of a change between those times. So, like, of course, it won't be considered science fiction. Mm-hmm. And yet, uh... And yet, uh... There's another film, uh... I want to, I want to bring up. It was called, uh... It was called, uh, I think, the, the Tenth, uh... The Tenth Victim? Oh, uh, yeah. Have you guys, uh... Heard of this film? I have not heard of it, and uh, I've never seen it before, but no, it's... No, me neither. Tenth Victim? It's... It, I'm assume you've seen it. Well, yes, I have seen it. So um, tell us about it. <laughs> so what's the plot here? Well, this is considered science fiction, and it takes place in the future... But it was made in 1965, and uh, uh, it takes place. Uh, That's the thing; it's it, unspecified. Uh, it takes place in the, mm -hmm, the not too distant future, which, uh, if you actually watch the film, looks very much like the present in 1965, but. Um, uh, uh, but this is a future in which it is uh, it is now legal to kill another person just so long as it's for TV enter entertainment. Oh, jeez! Wow. 
thoughts? I can actually think. Actually, come to think of it, this it sounds familiar. The tenth victim. Oh, God. Uh, oh no, never mind. The pre- it's just the premise that sounds familiar. Like I, I know a movie that's a, that kind of sounds like that. We'll Running go on. games, Hunger Man. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. It was um. Nah, it, it was something about like making a reality show where um, like six contestants come in and they have to like they have a pistol with one bullet and like. If you don't get shot to death, then you win like five million dollars. Uh, I don't know that. Uh, but yeah, it's a real movie. It's about the making of that thing, and it's like, are the, people listening to this? If you know what it is, please write down in the comments what the fridge am I talking about? Because I don't even know the title of the movie. All I know is that I saw that thing, and I was like, what the fridge? What the. French. Oh man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a very interesting. So, would this be considered uh, the point that I was getting at? Was would this sort of a film be considered a a film set in the future now in retrospect? Uh. Hmm. Well, I guess it's like, it's like, um, uh, I don't know how to say this. Well, based upon the plot of it, it's, it would seem like it would be. I have a questioning voice because I'm not sure. No, I was thinking more like. I think it would still be considered like um, like a movie set in the future because this is, it's their future, not like like as the gen, like as years would go by, the vision of the future like would become like much more different than we would think it would be. So I think it would be a film still set in the future, but it's their future, not ours. Okay. You know, like hey. Well, that, 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 that's at least my answer of it. Mike, your thoughts? But, I don't know. It just really boggles my mind thinking about it. I mean, it, it, it could either go a lot of ways. It could... I think you just opened a wormhole in Mike's brain. It, it just... That the plot of it just seems like, you know, it's set, it, not in our future, because, you know, there's nothing like that happening. It's in the future, a fictional future where this happens. It's not like it could happen now. Like, you could have a something like this happen right now. For example. Mm-hmm. Well, it's like, um, well, it's a weird thing, but you have to accept that it's like, it's a different interpretation of the future, you know? It's like, um, you know the game Street Fighter 2010? Mm Mm-hmm. Like, like, you know the game, like, uh, you know the game Street Fighter 2010, like for the NES? Vaguely, yes. Yeah, essentially, like, like, like they think that in 2010, like, there's going to be a lot of like crazy crap going on, like, with, like the technology is like beyond advanced and stuff like that. And yet, here we are, three years later, after like their year of um, what they interpreted of the future is, and like nothing much has changed. It's not like that, so. That's what I mean by their interpretation of the future. It's mostly it's di- it's it's not our future. It's like it's their future, you know? It's it's a really really complicated thing to explain. 
you know like everybody's vision of the future is different you know like if if you ask someone to draw like a dog like everybody's got to have a different version of a dog essentially like some will draw like chihuahuas and some will draw like great Mm -hmm. games Mm -hmm. If you ask someone to draw what you think the future is going to happen, everybody's will, okay. everybody will be so, different, no matter which generation you're in and no matter which uh, like age you are or whatever. Hope you can understand. I, I can understand. I'm, I'm making it up between the different glitches in the, in the connection dialogue here. Yeah, but, uh, um, yeah, that's true, that's true. Uh, so, uh, by the way, else, um, what else do we if have I may to, add, oh, go on. What else do we have to pile on this, uh, what else, what else do we have to pile onto this, uh, the, this, uh, pile of theories? On this, uh, future thing? Well, I have, um... I, I actually just realized, James, I can answer your question now regarding the, like, because it's in the future, it has to be science fiction. I, I actually have, like, a legitimate answer for that. It's um, essentially, it can be, but it depends on how much it focuses on its technology. Like, uh, take, for example, artificial intelligence. The, the like the Steven Spielberg movie that like he worked like in honor of uh, Stanley Kubrick. The thing is, is that it's about this like this boy that was made by man. It was made. It's like he's pretty much a machine, but it centers around the kid. But that but here's the thing. He like he's essentially a ro- He's essentially a robot. So they're pretty much focusing on the technology of this kid, which pretty much it, it hasn't been made yet, but like they say in the future, this will happen. Or like, same thing like with other films, like Bicentennial Man, it's about this robot, Robin Williams, or this, uh, or uh, like I Robot. It's pretty much about, it pretty much, it's pretty much about these robots that may have something wrong with them. So, like, there, I'm sure, like you said, there are some movies that are set in the future, but they're not science fiction films because they don't really focus as much on the aspect of its uh, technology, and they just focus on the characters themselves, but set in a, in, a, in a later time. So, essentially, yeah, it depends on how much it focuses on the technology it has. Mm-hmm. Seems legit to you? Okay. Seems legit. Mike? It's totally... Makes sense to me. Alright, now we got some. We got something that you couldn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're not... Like, your mind what is not a bottle for, for one. It's like, what the hell is that? It's like, what the fuck is this shit? I was oh, I was not expecting that to come out of the blue. What? Um, it's the, ni- They say it's 1999, but 1999 is not like it at all. Is it still the future? <laughs> I was just um, I was hoping we we're gonna talk about certain films. Oh, don't worry, we will. We will. <laughs> Just threw me off. Wow, a trip to the moon. The George Belay's film took place in 2002. I didn't know it actually had a had a date attached to it. The hell? Oh, I guess so. I yeah, I heard about that. Nine, oh, hundred years in the future. And I think he overshot that uh, uh, that estimate a bit much, don't you? I would say. <laughs> oh man, I mean, oh, you, you just—it's—it's it's fun to read um, predictions of the past that 
people are thinking of of the future. It's just hilarious how they, it's like, something happens, and then nothing happens. I'm being very vague today, so... Mm -hmm. Well, one thing that they got right was that uh, we did go to the moon, but it wasn't as far back as 2002. Nope. But right now it's 2012, and we 2013, and we still don't have flying cars. Shucks. <laughs> well, well, we do have the... um, we do have like special TVs where we can talk to each other like on the phone. That existed. That exists now. Yes. In fact, theoretically. We yes. are using this. Only I have to turn my phone around to. Only now I have to. I have to turn my phone around to get the camera aimed at my face. And that, that way I can't actually see the other person. But anyway. Yeah. Um. Just. Just. Maybe thought of something. Uh. Back to the Future Part Two. Is one of those examples where most of the technology thought of, like for example, voice. I mean, video calls actually exist you know they depicted that right and there's a lot of things that be back to the future part two yeah there were some predictions yeah there was some freaky deaky predictions from back to the future part two um mm -hmm. of course you know 2015 is only two years away so what do you know we're not going to have flying cars or hoverboards or and so far, so far, the only thing that's confirmed for maybe for 2015 is those self-lacing shoes. That's it. Oh, ooh, not really. Why'd you think of that? Oh, I got you. I, no, got, the, I got one for you actually. Uh, they correctly no, predicted because, uh, the Nike 3D movie craze coming like back. Confirmed, like they're gonna make it. Huh? What'd you say, James? I said that they correctly confirmed the 3D movie craze coming back. Oh, yeah, yep, yep, that was a nice nod to it. But there won't be a Jaws 19, <laughs> directed by Max Spielberg. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I didn't really hear that Nike was doing a self-lacing shoe. I, I, I guess I'll be waiting for that then. I just, I just knew that that um, Nike did the um, was a Nike Nike Meg, which is like the a replica of the shoe, like a stylized to Back to the Future mm -hmm. Part Two back a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. But um. No, but I remember like. No, but I remember like Nike said like they they would release like they released replicas recently. But they will be making actual self -lacing, self lacing shoes in 2015. They like they said that they will make it. Okay, I I totally forgot about that. I wasn't paying attention. So listen, my boy. <laughs> I'm not listening very good, man. What, are you are you still listen? What are you still trapped in that? In the co in the complexity of the no. future, but no, like I'm not. predicted today. No, God, shut up. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> anyways, in most movies, you know, they try to predict things very accurately. Mm -hmm. And you know, Back to the Future Part Two is like one of the most notable ones for predictions. I mean, there's tons. Another trend in future films that I noticed were the um. Um. Uh, reality slash co competition game show futuristic movie where you know a contestant goes on this game show you know and you know on a game show like for example the running man or um rollerball or yeah and they're thinking oh, like uh, yeah and the stakes are huge like now they're gonna like now the penalty of losing is like death. death. Death, yes, death. Yeah, Rollerball, The Running Man, and recently The Hunger Games. I think that, I think that's the only three I could think of. I don't think there was any other uh, ones. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what was it? Yeah, I guess. Oh yeah, the. Uh, one, I remember watching I I'd The Running Man say... actually. 
Yeah. Um. I've seen the Running Man myself. You know, you gotta love Arnold Schwarzenegger. And uh, gotta love Arnold. <laughs> it's um. It's actually interesting to see that kind of game show happening in the future. It was just it was outrageous. And, of course, you got to have um, Richard Dawson to become the host of that game show, known for his run yes. on The Family Feud. Oh, man, I just loved the hell out of it. It was like having fun with that role. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Same man. here. I remember... That, that's what I remember back then when uh, me and my family would watch like game shows all the time, like retro game shows actually, like from the seventies, like mm -hmm. Match Game and Family Feud and all that stuff. And like we, that that's possibly the element that we that we remember the most is actually Richard Dawson. Uh, it's like it, we we felt like it's Richard Dawson being himself, yes. but like set in the future, doing this crazy running like. Hosting this crazy game show, so like, like we just imagine, like, like even in the future, Richard Dawson will never change. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, see, and that sort of subgenre of, of those films just don't exist anymore. I mean, those Hunger Games came out recently. That's it. Nothing else. Why keep, don't people come up with these kind of movies? Because I like them. Because I like, what kind of game will they invent in the future? Like the Running Man, you know, where convicted criminals, runners, must escape death at the hands of professional killers. <laughs> it's like, what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but on the other hand, it's like I think that's like, a, isn't it? I feel like the like Hunger Games. It's kind of like a mix of both, of like a, a dystopian setting and a utopian setting, because like when you see. Um, uh, Katniss, like in her hometown, she's like in a very poor, like dystopian future. It's yeah. like that's the major poor side. And then suddenly you go into the Hunger Games, like the place where the Hunger Games arena is held. It's like, it's this glorious utopia. It's like, yeah, um, it's like, like this beautiful town. Um, I was trying to think. What I was trying to remember it. What if it? It's uh, I, I read it's it. Whole class. I was just reading system. it. It was like a post-apocalypse. It's the whole class system theory thing. Yeah, class system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, being extrapolated for the for the future, kind of like they recently did with uh, Elysium, which was a joke in my opinion. Oh, <laughs> I see. Oh yeah. Uh, the uh, yeah, yeah, but like that one, they take it. I think they took it a little too seriously over the factor of um, like the few like the the dystopia dystopia versus the utopia essentially. I don't know. They, they, it's like it's it's a summer movie. That's not like. But that's how to best explain it. It's like there's not much of an argument. It's like just say. Yeah, but it's a summer movie, and like everything, ex like everything will be explained from that sentence there. Oh, that's what I f forgot. Besides, um, there's a lot more than I thought. There was like Death Race, um, Death Race 2000. That's like kind of a race, you know, to the death or something, which was, uh, and that whole stinking franchise. Um, trying to think, trying to think of. I saw the first of the of the new death races with uh yeah you that you you have to see yeah they, death race with jason statham is the one you have to see because the sequels are pretty much prequels to the first movie i don't know why they numbered them two and three it should have been like well other way around it's really confusing death race zero or something like that or like the it's like Death Race beginnings because it tells the beginnings of the, the character racing. It's really confusing, but 
Death Race was a remake of Roger Corman's Death Race 2000. This is how Mario Kart should have been. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's true. New Mario Kart, rated M for mature. Um. Um. Anyways, I I was just looking at the list and I just found one that was really interesting and I never thought that it would be considered like a film set in the future. Believe it or not, The Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. I was just looking at it. I was like, yes. It's. I was like, wait, really? Like, I didn't know. And like, and thank God, like, uh, the list gave us a good, like, a bit, like, of explanation. Apparently, uh, uh, let me read it, actually. Uh, Come on, you stupid little thing. All right. The Dark Knight was apparently set in the year 2008, as made evidence by the car that Bruce Wayne was driving. It was a Lamborghini from the year from the year's model. It was estimated that Harvey Dent was killed eight years previously, making the year 2016. So it's because of a freaking Lamborghini that the Dark that the Dark Knight Rises is set in the future. <laughs> God. Um. Oh, well, oh, was, not I was, just that, but they're also going by the previous, huh? Yeah, I was just going to say that. Just They're going by what I said earlier with um, going off with the last movie left off and have it set a couple or a few years in the future after something happened in the last film, like a mm-hmm. transition to the next film. Pretty much the you know, same actually- logic of... Uh, Child's Play 2 to Child's Play 3, or if you want to go back even further, even uh, even Friday the 13th Part 4 uh, on to Part 5. I know those are not the official titles, but uh, there's a 15-year difference between the two films. Mm-hmm. And it actually goes by... Dark um... Knight Rises takes place eight years years after the events in Dark Night, so? Yeah, actually, what's interesting is that it goes by what you were talking about, James, that this is another, um, this would actually be considered a, a film that's set in the future, and yet it's not a science it's fiction film. It's more of a comic book action movie. Mm, yes, indeed. <laughs> But like, let's let. I have to admit, we have to be honest. Like, would anybody actually think that this is a movie set in the future? Like, be, like they they never had a like they never explained the year and like, like I mentioned on that little thing is that, it like they they know it was two thousand and eight because of the car that they were driving. Now. Like, would anybody know, like, would anybody actually, like, remember that, like, like, oh, this is a movie set in the future because, like, when Bruce Wayne was driving that car, it was a 2008 model. It's like, yeah, well, like, what what does it mean for The Dark Knight? It, the Dark Knight was in 2012, and, like, all the, I'm sure all the cars in the movie was in 2012. Like, did everybody decided not to, not to buy? Buy any new cars in 2016 and just buy like, like hand me downs of 2000 of 2012. Like they were having a giant 2012 sale somewhere. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? I think in the movie they actually uh, did explain that it had been about what eight years since uh, since Batman had disappeared. Yeah, it was something. Well, they, they said, but uh, do they say the specific year they're in on, like, there? Oh, that's like, a good they, Do they say, like, no, they say, they like don't. it is July 4th, 2012? No, they probably, no, I don't think they did. I mean, they just say eight years. Oh, my God. Like I don't, I'm saying they don't think they specify a year, but you know somebody, mind you, listeners, we're checking out the Wikipedia list of films in the future. You know whoever did the list, you know, must have like figured out the math of 
the fucking movie, and just like, oh, okay, Dark Knight Rises is set in the future. And to answer your question, Matt, about uh, <laughs> uh, to answer your question about car models, uh, I actually happen to know one or two car fetishists that might be able to to answer that for you. So, mm. but you're right; it's a very small controlled group of people <laughs> that would be able to guess. Oh man. I'm not saying that there isn't, but it's like, out of how many will know that, you know? Yeah. A select few people might. (laughs) But who the fuck knows? I'm just imagining right now, just a little, like a car enthusiast that knew the logic in the Dark Knight, and now it's like... They're watching The Dark Knight Rises, and they specified it's like eight years li- later. And they're watching all the events in The Dark Knight Rises, and they're like, "It's the future!" <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh man! Yeah, maybe the movie company should go to the to the car companies and say, "Okay, we're making this movie. It's going to be eight years in the future, but we know it's 2012 right now." Uh, when it's going to be released. So what we need need is all of your car models and all your designs for the 2016 year so we can so we can accurately predict what cars are going to be like. And that way that way fans of the movies will come will come out later and say, "Yeah, see they totally predicted that 4 years after the fact." And then, and also, I can imagine they're gonna call these Apple cars showed up like, in the marketplace. Yeah, but yeah, I can also imagine like they're gonna go to Apple and it's like, yeah, um, can you make the iPhone nine right now? We just need to make it accurate for 2016. Oh, <laughs> oh my god! Uh, we'd like a we'd like an advanced copy of the Xbox One and Two. <laughs> 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 oh man um actually i've seen I it, it, it's okay if it's beta you know we're just gonna show it for footage <laughs> wait we didn't set it but are, do you need the drm right now because we need to we're still sending that in <laughs> <laughs> oh my god um but we don't have any downloadable content for 2016 yet. Uh. <laughs> oh my God. We still need a Halo 5. <laughs> How long are you going to go for? <laughs> How long is it? That- we still have two years left. Let's crank out a bunch of Jaws movies and then we'll get to Jaws night. <laughs> Exactly. That's what every, every Back to the Future fans like. You know what? They should make more Jaws films and get up to nineteen before twenty fifteen. Yeah, but unfortunately, this the, all like in all of those Jaws films, like the shark will still look fake. <laughs> that's, that's a nice reference. The shark You're still welcome. Looks fake. <laughs> Um, I'm still waiting for that hoverboard. Um, yeah, I know, me too. I want the hoverboard so bad. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, oh, uh, uh, I was just looking. I was going to mention an animated movie that was set in the future. What? Mind you, this is not the Michael Bay Formers. It's the original Transformers the movie that was set in ah. the future. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Oh, uh, wait. If I'm correct, where am I the hell? Uh, it's set in 2005, and it came out in 1996. Uh, where is it? Where, where is it? I'm trying to. Oh, here it is. Yes. 
Although this one, I will admit, even though it was like it, it's trying to predict um, nineteen, like two thousand and five, like isn't the whole movie set on? Um, so, uh, what, what? Where are they from again? Cyber, Cy- Cyberdyne, or <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, you're, are you, My mind's a little bit rusty. You don't know Transformers? Oh, it takes... Yes, it, I, I know Transformers. It's it, just I'm having a brain fart. It takes place in 2005, 20 years after the events of the TV series, second series, and serves to bridge into the third season. Cybertron! There we go. Cybertron! Okay, okay. Okay, thank God. Okay, there we go. There we go. Cyberdyne. That's the. Oh, wait. I just realized Cyberdyne is the Terminator thing. <laughs> yeah, Cyberdyne Industries actually does exist. Fun fact. Oh, yeah, that's true. What did they do again? <laughs> they make robots. Get out of town. They, what? They're sure. a Japanese company. They named them. <laughs> Yes, there's a. They are a Japanese a company that specializes in making androids. No shit. I think, are you kidding oh God. me? Uh, I think. I think. I, I think you're actually right. I think I've heard of that. Yeah. I think recently I've heard of the news that they made this special like robot suit in which like it makes you much more stronger. That's true. My God. Like. It makes. Like it'll That's help the like, real Iron Man to suit walk. right there. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. they they essentially made an Iron Man suit. Oh, that's true. Oh my god. Oh my god. Speak. We must hide. Speaking of um, suits. Uh, let's talk the about. The future Ro- is dark. Let's talk about. Uh, let's talk about Ro- RoboCop <clears throat> for a sec. That's set in the future, and he's got a. He's a cyborg with this armor on. Oh yeah, isn't there a, a isn't there a yep. remake going on yep, that's PG thirteen and it's gotta suck? Yeah, did you see the trailer for it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I said it's gotta suck. Yep, yep, it's fucking suck, suck, suck. I actually saw a picture. It's so funny. It's the old RoboCop versus the new RoboCop, and like. The the new Robocop sh- is trying to shoot the old one, and it's like, and it's like it does nothing. It's like, is your pistol even working? Well, I'm well, yeah. Well, oh yeah, you're PG thirteen, right? Yeah. Well, I'm rated R, and he essentially shoots down, guts everywhere on the PG thirteen <laughs> Robocop. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh. Oh man, um, what? Where? What the fuck was I? What was I gonna say about what? I'm trying to remember. Robocop. Robocop. I know, I know, I know. But yeah, in 2015, it's said in 2015. So two years from now, we'll have our very own Robocop. Psst. And we'll have. And we'll. It's like we're we're gonna be like. I could just imagine it now, RoboCop trying to stop some cops with with a hoverboard. <laughs> That's. <laughs> I can I can imagine it. It's just on the hoverboard. <laughs> Chase it after a bad guy. No, it'll be just like a reenactment of um. Uh, like in Back to, to the Future, future 2, 2 when Marty tries to stop like those thugs. And yeah. like it's just gonna be Robocop. It's like, hey little girl, give me that hoverboard. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> hey you bozo head Robocop, you know never to work out water. <laughs> Yes, I mean, it's not, and with RoboCop, it's not really futuristic per se, it's not, because in 2015, it's pretty much all the same, except for, you know, you can, we can make, um, 
he can, you know, help save a guy and put him, make him into a cyborg, cyborg and well, kind of, because mm-hmm. if it's futuristic, you gotta have the technology to, you know, have the will to make, you know, help save a guy and turn him into like a robotic person. Mm-hmm. It's essentially what we were talking about with that Cyberdyne Iron Man suit. Exactly. Exactly. It's to make him more super powered and more invincible, like to stop bad guys. And one more thing. Uh, one thing I really want to I want to mention that's really interesting is that apparently, um, like like we mentioned, RoboCop. The original RoboCop is set in 2015, but with the remake that's coming up in 2014. It's actually set in uh, 2028, apparently. So, like, they gotta push I, that. I, uh, they gotta push that date back. Oh shit! Good point, Matt. Yeah, it's like okay, you're pushing it back to 2028. Yeah, it's like well, 2015 is gonna be next year, and we don't have that technology yet. So let's like push it a bit more to uh, 20. 20 to 2028 so it's like in that kind of sense i understand that they want to still make it feel like it's set in the future but on the other hand it feels like now it's going to be like it feels like it's going to be like loosely based now yeah i think it yeah and it's it's, like it's not gonna be uh like there was it'll be like that other movie where we thought it was a remake but it's like a completely different interpretation. Uh, like, uh, there was one perfect example in my mind, but I don't know which one is it. Like, it was trying to be its own thing instead of being a remake. Not Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, but it's like something else. Yeah. I'll, uh, let but, us know when you find that other mind of yours. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Go search for that. Um, ironically, you know, for the 2014 reboot of RoboCop, the the setting of 2020, it's exactly 14 years into the future. So, get, get it? The film is going to come out in 2014, and the film's set in 14 years from now. Oh, mm. I get it. Clever, clever executive <laughs> producers, have some money for your cleverness. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> oh, this list is weird. Yeah, we should we should totally do these podcasts earlier in the day. Look at how energetic everybody is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's like, uh, hey everybody. I'm my I'm tired as hell. I'm gonna go to bed. No, of course they're all energetic now. It's actually quite perfect. Oh, yeah. Oh, Future Sport. Holy shit. That's future another... Sport? Future Sport is another um, um, sport slash game show movie. But it's... Oh, oh it's Future amazing. Sport. Future. I understand Future Sport. I sorry, future. Sp- I was excited. I was like, it's future sport, a made-for-TV movie. If now this now no no the sport, future sport, mind you, is a combination of basketball, baseball, hockey, and it uses hoverboards and rollerblades. Wait, baseball, basketball, hockey, hockey. and it uses hoverboards and rollerblades. So try to imagine. Actually I'm trying to mix it. Totally awesome. <laughs> I'm trying to mix all these together, but somehow I can't. Hold on, I want to check something out here because sounds familiar to me. I need a picture of the sport. Like, I don't get it. Yeah. It's well, like how? Then I mean, first of all, this is a made-for-TV movie with a very low budget of nine million. Oh, 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 let me let me rephrase that. It's it was very high budget for a TV movie at nine million. 
<laughs> it's high budget, but it's still low budget. It has uh, Wesley Snipes, Vanessa Williams. Oh, wow. It's just... Just trying to see. Oh no, no, I don't want that one. I hate when they do that because rollerball is, like I said earlier, is another game sport set in the future, and it's been remade in 2002, which sucks compared to the original 1975 version. I was told that uh, that's funny. I was told that the 1975 version wasn't that good to begin with. Oh. But I haven't seen it, so yeah. Um, because I'm trying. Because a lot of these futuristic sport movies, you know, they kind of have the same theme. And I'm kind of wrong here. Future uh, rollerball is similar to roller derby in that two teams clad in body armor skate and, on rollerblades around a banked circular track. The object of the game is to score points by the offensive team. The uh, team in position of the ball threw in a softball-sized steel ball into the goal, which is magnetic core-shaped area and set into the wall of the arena. The team without possession of the ball is defensive and acts to prevent scoring. It's a full-contact sport in which players have considerable leeway to attack opposing players in order to take or maintain pos possession of the ball and to score points. Why does that sound familiar, too? Doesn't that sound like, um... I don't know... Quidditch? Well, they don't have brooms, so... Yeah, it's only without brooms. I mean, it's either on rollerblades and motorcycles. Because each team has three players who can ride on motorcycles. Mm. It just... Yeah, it's just interesting how they... Like I said, it's interesting how they make a future sport, uh, a futuristic sport they play, to create a non-lethal way to reduce gang warfare. Uh, sounds non-lethal, all right, I guess. Yeah. 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 It sounds like another one of those, like, um... <coughs> excuse me. It sounds like it could be one of those sub-series about, like, those killer game shows, like The Running Man and stuff like that, you know? Exactly, yeah. It's yeah, it's just with um, the, the future of sport and the game show, you know, the kind of, like, oh, you gotta play this sport and it's in the future kind of thing. <laughs> you can't be cool unless you play this sport. Yeah, you can't be cool unless you played some future sport. Uh, um, mm. let's see. If you died in future sport, you're not cool. Oh, <laughs> uh, man, um. Uh, I've seen that. I've seen that one. Any other movies you guys want to bring up? I know I have... Actually, there's one that well, I want to bring up. Hold on, I just need to find it. Or, James, you want to go? I was going to say, uh, I had... My Earlier on, I had mentioned um, uh, I had mentioned uh, the fifth element. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, this is not just uh, the Blade Runner type of future, but this is also the future. This is also the cloud future. Um, this is uh, this is the 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 time when uh, everybody lives above the clouds or maybe even above the above the pollution uh in this case oh at least in the big cities mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so uh the question i have to ask is how uh how high up do you have to be to uh in the in the uh in the air to be above the clouds and above the pollution well, oh, like in, oh, like in, um, oh, what was it? The Jetsons, like yep. when they put their house houses so high. Yeah, 
You was just say the Jetsons have a, that clear example. Yeah, the Jetsons. Well, the Jetsons. That was. Uh, uh, I think that they were that they they say that in theory, uh, perhaps the Jetsons universe was like that because pollution was so bad down below. But if you watch like the opening to the show, you see that Earth. Earth is still very green and in blue. You know, it's it's looking mm-hmm. it, it's looking okay. Mm-hmm. So I think in the Jetsons they were just uh, they were just sort of living up in the sky because hey that's the future that's that's uh, it's all cool and whatnot. Mm. It reminds uh, me of that uh, that robot chicken joke. It's like it, like George Jetson he fell off of his house and it's like fell down from the sky, and, like, we just see one of the cops is like, yeah, like, well, why would we even make these buildings, like, so, so god for second high? Damn. We are so stupid in the future. <laughs> uh, exactly. Yeah, you gotta have reasons for this stuff, people. Come on. I... Yeah. Well, I don't know. Like they just focused on make. I don't know. Like Bill Hanna and well, Bill Hanna, Bill Hanna and Joe Barbera. Like they were just thinking, like, oh, let's just make it in the like, just just make a family of a family sitcom of the future. We don't have to go into too much detail. You know, it's a sitcom. People just want to laugh over family matters, and then watch family matters afterwards. <laughs> Sorry about that. I what? have to go to the bathroom. Yeah, okay. If you wonder you if I was... to wait? No. I, you didn't notice me leaving? No. Oh, you came back. Oh. <laughs> wow. Uh, no wonder you weren't responding in the conversation. That's okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm just making sure if you guys are like, where's Mike? <laughs> you left? <laughs> I was being sneaky. I've done it in the past. Um, yeah, when you're when you're on Skype, you're a ninja. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the um. <laughs> what were we talking about again? You guys was the talk- movie you were talking about the Jetsons? <laughs> the Fifth Element. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It, it was uh, it was the the fifth element. Yeah. Uh, but I I just wanted to bring up that sort of sub trope uh, of the uh, you know the highly polluted uh, future, and I was I was wondering you know why why what is the logic between behind uh, positioning yourself above uh, so high above the pollution? Uh, wouldn't you run out of oxygen? That is true. Although the, the air must be found really like an thin in those cities. System. I can only think of two logical reasons: is that a they brought up the oxygen, uh, like way up there, and like in the households and in the cars and stuff like that. Or two, is that like their lungs have evolved to adapt the dense air. You mean the not so dense air? Well, uh, um, yeah, uh, yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> that could be a good theory. <clears throat> okay. Mhm. Yeah, the fact that you really oh, yeah. had to explain that, but not the movie, that creates a problem. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I have like that's how that's how I feel all the time as an internet critic. It's like, it's like, do I have to do the work to explain everything in the movie? <laughs> Can't the movie itself explain its things? Isn't that its job? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um. But anyways, um, uh, are you done? Or like, uh, there's this one movie I really want to talk about. And that would be... Okay, I'm done. Um, I was... Oh, okay. 
Um, I was looking at the list and like I noticed all the years that they're going like they're up and it's like we see like a lot of the 2000 and 3000s and I want to find like the biggest number and so far I think I found it it is from the 1997 uh, Ralph Bakshi animated classic Wizards set in 2,4977 so yeah oh my goodness I was I was just looking at that that a minute ago and I was like, okay, this has to be brought up. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, what? what? Wait a minute. How do they list it like that? It just looks well, like... I don't know. What the fuck? Wait, what? Like, I, it's like, I can understand set in the future, but, like, I find the wizards to be a bit of something, like... Like, to the point, it's like, okay, yeah, it's in the future, like, it's part science fiction, but, like, it's gone to the point where it's, like, it's, like, part fantasy, you know? Like, they have, have like, fairies and wiz wizards and, like, mis mystical, mythical woodland creatures in there. <laughs> well, you know? yeah, because like, the film is a science fantasy film. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's it's science fantasy, like... Yeah, like it's... now they've gone like beyond the future. This is not a future that anyone is going to know about. I mean, it's the, it's in the it's in a world, it's in a world where like their year is a freaking seven digit number. So like like we're not like yeah, we're not even a hundred percent sure if the, the, if the, the Earth is going we to live so... this long. Yeah. <laughs> Just, yeah, we went so few, so far into the future in this film that we, uh, uh, that we done went back into the past. That's why the movie looks like. Uh, <laughs> that's why the movie looks looks the way it does because at some point in history we went we went full retard. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> just... yeah. Essentially, it's like it's to the point where we needed a a, a giant reset button. Just like what happened with the dinosaurs, you know? Oh, my God. Uh, like, screw this, we need a new Earth. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. By the way, an interesting fact that I want to mention, for anyone who has seen, like, have you guys seen Wizards? I have. Guys? I haven't. I haven't. Yeah? Okay. If you have seen the film, mm -hmm. um, the thing is, is that, would you consider this a family film? Like, in the same veins as, like, a Disney film? Well, it's rated no, PG. No, no, It's rated PG, no, though. No, no, It's rated no, PG. No. no. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> it's rated PG, though. What's okay, no. With it? It, it, no, okay, it, can I give you an films example? Films were rated like, PG literally, in, okay, you in the 1970s. Know, like, that, because of that, if, if, Okay, films were rated that way, PG, in the, in the 1970s, that deserved an R rating in today's world. That's how mm -hmm. screwed up this... Like, literally... The, the, yeah. yeah, 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 and yeah. Uh, like literally the um, the main like you want to know how the main character like how we're introduced to our main hero? It's so funny. It's like we see him go like we lo he looks through a telescope and he's like, ah, damn it! And then it's like he gives up and it's like walks out. It's like I was like I would like to see Disney introduce a character like that. Okay. We would just see, we would just see Snow White. I'm wishing for the one. Ah, damn it, my back! <laughs> Need a freaking medic. And Disney is so. Damn it, my pills. <laughs> Disney, Disney is so squeaky clean. I mean. Yeah, but anyways, what I want to try to say is that Ralph Bakshi considered this his first family film 
Like, he says that this thing is much better than any Disney film released at the time, like, in the 70s or the 80s. It's like... I wouldn't consider this a family film. Attempt, maybe, but not a fa family film. At all. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. It's each with a one, two, three. Okay. Real Steel. Robot Boxers. Real Steel? Oh. Real Steel. Robot Boxers with Hugh Jackman. Jackman. For a moment there, I thought it was Sylvester Stallone for a second, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Yep. Set in 2032. Uh, Unbelievable. A great heartwarming story. Um... It's based around the fact that in the future you there's this robot um, fighting league of some sort, like boxing, like Rocky does. Um, the thing is, it's not really futuristic. Like, I mean, you, futuristic like you can build the robots to make them fight, and there's nothing else. I've watched the movie, and I don't think there's any. Like, if you look at the the backgrounds, you know, the setting of you know, it's not really futuristic it's like looks like normal to our realm of the present kind of mm. um yeah and actually sci-fi apparently did... they're planning a sequel of it oh yeah that's right i've heard about that I, I remember hearing about that dreamworks you gotta love dreamworks yeah, not the DreamWorks we know with Katzenberg and Shrek. The, the other, the other, other, the other DreamWorks with Spielberg and Disney. Yes. <laughs> um. Shit. Now I just lost, lost my train of thought for a sec. Oh, just I uh, wanted to bring it full circle. Where um right now uh, recently uh, was it was it this year or last year? This it's probably last year. That Sci-Fi or Sci-Fi did this uh, reality competition show. Called Robo Robot Combat League, where they actually built robots to fight like boxers. Yes, I remember watching a few episodes. I remember. So, yeah, yeah, and they actually got some interesting people in there. Yes, and a lot, yeah, a lot of like, um, yeah, like there's a lot of people who have backgrounds in robotics. But one of the most notable ones that I knew was um, George Lucas's daughter. Yes, that one. I remember. I saw that episode. I remember that so well. Yeah. It was just like I'm, when she when she mentions it, I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna have my dad come in." By the way, he's George Lucas. And then we see George <laughs> Lucas. It's like, what? You're like, what did we get? This is a real thing. <laughs> so yeah, so you think about it now. Like, it's reality now. So you can actually build robots. That you could fight, and it's not even set in 2032. It's now, so yeah, it's yeah, like it blows your is, mind. It looks a lot, yeah, and the funny thing is, it looks a lot like real steel. Like normal robot competitions, you would see like it's like like boxes of doom that are meant to destroy other yeah, boxes yep, of doom. Yep, but like, yep, yeah, this one is essentially like real fighting rock, like rock yes. and sock em style robots. Yes. So that just I just wanted to mention that because I kind of just threw me off for a sec like oh my god they fucking did it it happened it fucking <laughs> happened before real steel is the future <laughs> um don't want to talk about that one i'll skip that one till next time do i want to talk about <laughs> i gotta I, fuck i'll say this even before we go into that episode double dragon Oh, do you have to mention that? <laughs> I am on motherfucking Double Dragon. Oh, my God. 2007. Uh, that was uh, quite a while ago, and nothing freaking happened to make, uh, you know, Los Angeles now New La Angeles. Has that happened, James? Is it called New Angeles? James, you're near that. Can you confirm this? <laughs> Actually, no, I'm about six hours away from Los Angeles. 
Well, that's nearer oh, than uh, me. Well, tell me, is it Los Angeles or New New Angeles? It's uh, it's even worse. It's uh, they're talking about plans to make a San Angeles. What the fuck? What? No, no, you must. Yes, be it's it's San Francisco. It's San Francisco all the way throughout uh, uh, Los Angeles. You should know this. It's a it's the movie Demolition Man. <laughs> nice. What? Oh, oh, you got me there for a sec. Yeah, you really did. I was like, you you got to be joking. They can't do oh. something that stupid. <laughs> yeah, just it's weird how they do that. But I just double fucking. Dr- Dragon is not even based on the fucking video game. <laughs> Yet they destroyed an arcade machine. Yes, that that was Double Dragon. You, that's <laughs> that's the closest thing they ever got to to yeah, the to the game. You put the, the they Double ha- Dragon game inside the movie. That's above Double Dragon. It just it's a fucking paradox. <laughs> he, just right there, that kick that destroyed the uh, arcade machine just opened a wormhole. It did. It just fucking opened up. It ruined everything. Um, I don't think Double Dragon was set in the future. I mean, I would. I'm thinking about it now more, and I think it's set in a future kind of way where. You know, there's no. It's like gangs took over and they took took Billy and Jimmy's girlfriend. They had to go get him. Blah blah blah. No, it's set in a like it's no longer the future. It's set in an alternate reality. Yes, yes. It, it's set. It's like it's. I would call this the giant ugly mohawk alter like dimension. <laughs> yeah, just the stereotypical '80s slash '90s punk environment I, I i just remembered like that one good joke that that really good joke in the uh, nostalgia critic review of the um of double dragon is essentially like we just see the two like like mohawk guys and they, they laugh at whatever they want it's like hey tomorrow i gotta i gotta rook it all <laughs> um i just wanted to get that off that chest because that's it, it, it it's a bad I will get into more video game movies in the future, but this just, it's set in the future, which did not make what? any fucking sense, but it wasn't based on the game, it was just something fucking different. Okay. Double Dragon, you suck. Hollywood, if you're listening, if you want to make a futuristic kind of Alter reality, freaking video game adaptation of um, video game movie adaptation of Double Dragon. Make it good. Make it based on the fucking game, not just you, half ass it. Mike, 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 Mike. You're you're asking Hollywood to make a movie based on a remake. Do you honestly think that they're actually gonna do it well? After the countless and countless of movies based on a video game that sucked so hard. Do you honestly think that they're going to make something decent if they're going to redo Double Dragon? Honestly, you think if you, uh, most people say they can't do shit because video game movies are really hard to make. It's really hard to adapt it. But if you get the right people... Get the right director, get the right writer, get the right cast, and get the right soundtrack. It might be a good movie. You're asking a lot, man. I am You're asking, asking for a dream. I'm asking a lot. I'm sorry. I'm asking a lot. And well, they, uh... If people pinpoint me towards the direction of a of a good of a a good uh, video game movie adaptation, I always say probably Dead or Alive, because that oh, gave you all that yes. you really cared about from the from the from the games. Admitted. Yeah, it's true. Wait, which one? DOA Dead or Dead or Alive. 
Oh, right. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, yes, yes, oh, yes, that. yes. And we'll talk more about that in an episode. All about that. Um, <laughs> I'll just stick to the games. I'll stick to the to my to, to my little jiggled physics. <laughs> I mentioned a made-for-TV movie known as Future Sports. There's another made-for-TV movie that's set in the future. It's not even on the list, actually. It's not even on the list. You're not going to find it on the list. Because this movie is so obscure that most people don't even know it. It's not even... You know, no, nobody has seen it because it came out in 1994. And it was on YouTube at some point three years ago when I was looking for something to start my reviews on and it was 2010 and I was like wait a minute this movie is set in 2010 and I went to look around it's like this is not like the movie what the fuck's going on the movie I am talking about is Knight Rider 2010 which mm. is okay it's loosely based on the TV series known as Knight Rider it's it's not even canon to Knight Rider, period. Oh boy. It does not have Michael Knight. It does not... It it has sort of a kit in it, but it's not really a kit, per se. It's, it's very awkward. It's actually... The future is like Mad Max, which is a post-apocalyptic kind of thing. Wait, what is, what, what is the movie called again? Knight Rider 2010. Oh, oh, wait, wait. It's a Knight... What? Yeah. Knight Rider 2010. Loosely based on the TV show. It's a TV movie. Does not have Michael Knight. You know, David Hasselhoff. Just loosely based. Oh, just, my just lord. Loosely. It's very obscure because I've seen it on YouTube and it's gone. I've never seen it again. I try to find it. It's nowhere to be found. It's gone. I've seen it. It's so obscure. It's not even on the list. It isn't because it, 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 it it's just this movie that I've seen it once, and my God, it's not even it's not even Knight Rider. I love Knight Rider so much. And is it 2010 at least? No, because like I said, it's set in this post-apocalyptic desert kind of feel like Mad Max, and I don't think I mentioned Mad Max, but Mad Max is. An Australian film that is set in a post-apocalyptic Australia where, you know, it's all desert and they have post-apocalyptic. But this is like, you look outside, it's not post-apocalyptic. It's not, there's no desert. There's no, there's, it's, fuck. Oh the my way, gosh. The way they describe, the plot is just so, uh, how do I? It's very confusing. I see. Uh, I, I, see uh, I found it on IMDb. Apparently, it has like a three point two out of ten. It's 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 bad. That's really bad. It's um, they don't have a Pontiac Trans M for kit. They use a Ford Mustang. Um, not like the re not the, not the reboot TV series of Two Night Rider. Um. The it's not a computer that kind of, not an AI that runs Kit. It's this. Okay. It's gas. No 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 no. It's God. It's it's a really complicated plot here because there's this alter reality. You can suck your mind right into it. It's like Total Recall kind of, where you can ease your mind into this virtual reality game. Not even game. It's like a virtual reality place. So you can just go anywhere. It's like Second Life maybe. And you can download your conscience, you know, if you lost somebody, you can download their conscience into this prism. And they use this prism to stick inside the car, and it talks like it. So the car is, you know, it's controlling, the car is controlled by this prism, which is this person that was downloaded into and... It's not Knight Rider. It should not be called Knight Rider. 
and the stupid title of Nightmare 2010. Because, you know, they're trying to be like, okay, 2010, that's 10 years from now. Because we did Night Rider 2000, which was set in 2000, which we made in, in the 90s. Let's make a movie that's set 10 years from now, and it's post-apocalyptic, and it has nothing to do with Knight Rider. Sure, and let's not have Michael Knight, let's not have Kit. We have something like Kit, but it's, it's there's... It's okay, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. They're just trying to cash in on the. Uh, they try to cash on in thing. on the franchise, which they should you know, have not done. Just the crap movie. They, all they wanted to do was just cash in. Fucking cash in. I've done two of these nerd rants in one episode. Isn't that fucking weird? Um. I'm going to wrap it up. It's been going on way too long, and Please. I've been rambling way too much because I'm a film junkie, and I like to talk about films. Aren't we all? I mean, that's why we made this podcast, isn't Exactly. It? So I can... That's why I wanted to start this podcast, because I want to express my love for films. All right. Last one. This is going to be a real fucking doozy one, and you're going to love it, because it goes into the theme of every fucking episode I've, we've done... You know, I go into this obscure, like, exploitation type of film, you know. I thought it would be the Knight Rider thing you were talking about. No, I just wanted to mention that briefly. No, this one is beyond um, obscure. I mean, Knight Rider, fuck, don't care. This is set in the future. If I, wait, what's the year that it came out before I even say the title? Okay, three years from now. Three years from now, 2016, it's set in. The movie I'm talking about is called Zombie Strippers. What? Zombie Strippers, and it has quite a few people you might know. Uh, Robert England. What? What? Mm -hmm. Robert England? What? Freddy? Mm -hmm. Freddy, what? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. uh, Jenna Jameson, of course. Um, just to name a few couple. Um, so let me talk uh, about this. Well, it's strippers, so they need one. So. Yep, 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 exactly. Um, so let me talk about this dystopian um, future. Send 2016. That's three years from now. Here we go. In 2016, of zombie st strippers, George W. Bush has been elected into a fourth term. What? <laughs> That's already a okay. fantasy film Okay, so right already there. they were clearly not thinking, but go on. The United States Congress uh, has... Hey, if Richard Nixon... Wait. If Richard Nixon can get a sixth uh, <clears throat> term and... And, and Watchmen, and that's considered a classic. The United States Congress has been disbanded. <clears throat> Public nudity is banned. Oh, you're going to love this. The United States is embroiled in wars with France, Iraq, Afghanistan, Iran, Pakistan... Syria, Venezuela, Canada, and Alaska. And Alaska? What, they're at war with themselves? <laughs> yep. Oh, no, wait. Alaska succeeded. With more wars than there are soldiers to fight them, a secret laboratory ran by Dr. Shushfield in a fictional Nebraska has developed a virus to reanimate dead Marines and send them back into battle. However, this virus has, broke, has broken and has infected. It's broken. It's just, it's out. 
it's infected test subjects and scientists, and their risk of escaping the lab. A team of Marines, codenamed the Z Squad, is sent in to destroy the zombies. <clears throat> uh, one of the Marines is bitten, but escapes. He ends up in an alley outside the underground strip club called Rhino. Rhino. A strip club named Rhino. The Marine dies and awakens as a zombie mm -hmm. who goes into the strip club. And then you fucking know what happens. It wreaks havoc into the strip club. Zombies been strippers. It's zombie strippers. Um, but yeah, Rhino is run by uh, Ian Esco, which is played by Robert England. So he runs the strip club. Yeah. Um, a new stripper named Jessie has arrived at the club to save up enough money for her grandma's operation. <laughs> she is introduced to the club's star dancer, of course, Jenna Jameson, her character's cat. <sighs> cat begins her dance on the stage, but is attacked by the Marine. Esco is concerned about losing her best dancer, but... <sighs> So he lets... No, my prophet! So he lets her go back on the stage as a zombie. To everyone's surprise, Kat is a better and more popular dancer as a zombie than she was a human! Uh, the, uh, <laughs> the other strippers now find themselves faced with the prospect of losing their customers! As the customers prefer zombie strippers to human strippers. One by one, the what? <laughs> one by one, the human strippers become zombies. Some by choice in order to compete in, in compete. Or there, there's a there's a goth rock stripper for fun. Um, during uh, private dances, the zombie strippers bite and kill their customers. Uh, Esco, or Robert England, tries to keep the zombies hidden in a cage in the club cellar, but eventually the zombies escape and overrun the club. Cat and the under underrated stripper Jenny fight for supremacy. The remaining humans in the club struggle to survive until the Z Squad bursts in to destroy the zombies, but they discover that the zombies were allowed to escape by the Bush administration in the hopes that the ensuing zombie plague would distract Americans from their gross mishandling of the war effort and the economy. I, I have a question. Uh. What? What? Whoever you what? are, what? Yep. Zombie strippers. This is the second. This. Okay, oh, go on. Oh, and uh, by the way, what? <laughs> oh man. Um, what was I gonna say? Um, it's obviously it's actually both a zombie movie and a comedy film. It's very funny. It's really comedic. Um, came out in two thousand eight, and of course it depicts twenty sixteen. Um, very poorly, actually, <laughs> but it's actually, you know, it's all fun, because that's a, that's a comedy, you know, it's trying to make fun of it. Um. It's one of those so bad it's good films, or is it, like... Um, for my taste, my taste is so bad it's good, and I would, it's not a really good movie, it's funny to watch, I mean, it's, the acting's really... In between, and Robert England is just a joy to watch because he just—he's a snooty strip club owner. He just—he cares about his strippers more than anything else in the world. I care for my strippers. They're oh. like family to me. So that's forty. Per, it's forty-one percent on uh, Rotten Tomatoes. Um, uh, here let me. 
quote uh, Roger Roper. He stated, it looks terrible, doesn't work as camp, it doesn't work as a low-budget crap. It's a one-joke pick. Yeah, it's like a gimmick uh, movie like that. This. Yeah. All I have to say about this is that if the if this is the second time I think in his career that Rob, that uh, Robert England has portrayed somebody running a nightclub that exploits zombies, and uh, this actually sounds worse of the two on paper. The other time was. Uh, uh, the other time was an episode of Masters of Horror, which was overall a sucky series. So, uh, um, my 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 favorite uh, thing. Please stop! Please stop making movies about zombie strippers. Zombie strippers is that one film that is funny to some people some people don't like it i mean it's done in 2016 and it, it tells it's it the future is pretty funny if you think about it i mean bush is elected for a fourth term the war is outrageous especially against all these countries including canada and alaska and zombies zombies people love zombies don't they they love zombies um, Which Alaska is not even a country. It's a godforsaken un- a state. It, it is. It's funny because they're like, okay, United States is at war with Alaska for some odd reason. It's funny because it's topical. Um, so we'll actually put a pin in here. We're going to do a part two in the future. There's a lot to go through. We just barely broke the tip of it. And we rambled a little bit too much, especially on my end, because, you know, I'm a film junkie. And, um, yeah, we started <laughs> early, and we are running late, because somebody's due for a little munch and grunch. So. Yes, I am. Let me get the topic for the next episode. And we can... Fine. Disaster films. Oh boy. Mm-hmm. This will be in- this will be interesting. Stay tuned for the next episode of Sim Royale where we talk about films that include a freakingly huge disaster of some sort. See you later, dudes. <laughs>